Greetings everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, and welcome to the latest episode in my series on Is It Worth It? My Review Series. And today we're covering a game that I somehow knew nothing about until it popped up in my PlayStation Plus uh, subscription thing for, you know, one of the free free games that I get for the month. And I know the creative director of this project <laughs> has very strong feelings about people like me who didn't actually pay full price for the game. Um, be that as it may, uh, I have been blown away by this game. Uh, just, this is going to be me kind of oohing and awing over this game in the course of this review. I, I have, I've, I'm just, I'm loving it so far. Um, and I just can't believe that I somehow missed this when it came out. I really don't know how or why. Uh, be that as it may. Anyway, um, if this is your first time tuning in and you don't know who I am or anything about my channel, all the other things, there's plenty of playlists below where you can check things out. If you do like this video, I would love you to do a couple of things. One, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you liked about the review or the game itself. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you get updates for all of the other stuff I do here on YouTube, which is quite a lot of different things. I don't just do reviews and follow along for all the other things that I do here. In the meantime, let's talk about this game. Um, so I, I kind of feel, and I don't know a lot about the history of this game, so I'm kind of going into this kind of off the cuff a little bit. I kind of feel like the this game is a reaction to The Last of Us, kind of that zombie survival type post-apocalyptic game. Um, but where, and, and again, one thing I should say is I have not beaten this game yet. I'm about, th I'm about 30 hours in uh, so far. I started playing it uh, a few days ago. I beat uh, the first uh, game in the Mass Effect series, so I bought the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I did the review on that last week beat that game a few days ago and turned around and did this game next uh, before I do Mass Effect 2. And I didn't know anything about the game going into it other than the fact that it's been getting a lot of press recently uh, because uh, it had a PC port. And I know the creative director has stirred up some stuff for some of the comments he's made and, and recently uh, the actor Sam Whitworth, which I really like Sam. I've followed him since uh, the Battlestar Galactica days and I've loved all the work he's done in the Star Wars games and everything else. He did a Reddit AMA the other day. Um, so I know the game has been in the press recently, so that's kind of why I was like, hey, didn't I get this game for free the other month on PlayStation? And I went and looked in my library and sure enough I had the game, so I was like, hell, I'm going to download it and try it out and I woke up the other morning at 3 30 in the morning uh, a little bit of insomnia I woke up 3 30 logged in at four o'clock started playing the game next thing I knew it was nine o'clock in the morning and I was like oh shit I actually need to stop and go get some work done for my day job uh, it was that enthralling to me the game captivated me that much um, so again I haven't finished it yet so I don't know about the entire storyline but one thing I can say that I really like about this more so than Last of Us or Last of Us 2 is this game it's not quite as dark and that's the one thing I, I, I didn't really like about Last of Us 1 and 2 is it's just, just, just so fucking dark those games um, good games but just the storyline to me was just always a little too too much in that direction and this game doesn't necessarily feel um, that dark um, but there's also something about the, the, the way the game plays I really like the combat the storyline's been really good it doesn't hurt that I like the guy who, who is the, the, you know the actor behind the main character in this game and I've played lots of other games with him in them Star Wars you know and seen him as Darth Maul in, in, in various Star Wars versions um, so it doesn't hurt that I know who he is and I, and I like him as an actor but I just I, I just coming away from this you know as, as I've gone through the game there's not a lot that I don't like I'd say the one thing that does kind of take away, it does get a little bit repetitive, which I could say the same thing about like Assassin's Creed Valhalla or any game that has this, this type of repeatable content, which are the, the camps that you have to clear out, um, which you just do so for extra experience points and you get the bunkers and you get the additional recipes and so on and so forth. But the combat feels really good to me. 
the horde system is quite frightening. Uh, the first time I came up against a horde, I died horribly. Um, so that was an eye-opening experience. And I also like the way, like when you go to these Nero complexes, uh, I didn't realize, so the first one you do is very easy. Um, the second one, I didn't realize that you could you could um, cut the cables to the alarms before you turn on the power. So the second one that I turned on, I ended up getting a horde, got attracted, and the game auto-saved. And I was like, oh no. And so I had to spend, it was like an hour of like jumping into this dumpster, jumping out and like killing a few zombies, jumping back in, killing a few, you know, jumping back out, killing a few more until I had slowly, you know, kind of weeded through my way through this horde. And then I realized on the third one, when I went to the third Nero base, I was like, oh, you can actually cut the cables uh, before you turn on the power. And so then it's become this this puzzle thing for me where each time I get to a new Nero camp, I'm like, okay, so let's see. There's that one, that one, that one. And I've gotten most of them pretty much every single time. The most recent camp I did, uh, I think there was five speakers, and I missed one of them because it was way up on a tower, and I didn't realize that there was one I couldn't climb to. Um, I just thought it was power cables running up to a light and I didn't pay attention and I flipped on the power and I'd gotten the other four and that one started going off and I shot it and I thought that I got it in time and I was inside the trailer rummaging around and all of a sudden I hear the, the freaks, freakers coming, I think is what they call the freakers. I hear them coming and I turn around and I look out the door and like a wave of like 20 of them go running by towards where they heard the sound and I was like oh crap I hope I can get out of here and I managed to sneak out and make my way to my bike and turn around and look you know and there's a horde of like you know 15 20 of these freaks back there uh standing around looking up the light wondering where the noise came from um the motorcycle is so cool um I gotta say uh it's it, 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 it's one of those things where I haven't even gotten it fully customized yet, but it adds another extra layer to it. I like the fact that you have to repair it. It does get, thats I guess that's another thing I could say, is that it does get a little repetitive having to constantly fill up your gas tank. That's kind of like one of those things where... Um, a lot of people like to complain about like weight mechanics, like if you're you're carrying too much stuff or armor decay or things of that nature. But I do... Excuse me. I do think that the, you know, the way that the bike breaks down over time, excuse me, um, it's good for resources, but it's also uh, it keeps you conscious of things, so you're not just like driving off cliffs and things of that nature. And yeah, I mean, you can run zombies down, you can run wolves down, and so on and so forth. But you're going to damage the bike in the process, and you need parts and or coin to repair it. Um, and 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 I do like the fact that the bike gets better as you go along. Um. That's kind of a cool, it's a cool mechanic, I think. Um, and it just visually, it looks cool as hell to be rolling around in this motorcycle in the middle of the wilderness, taking out zombies. Um, so yeah, I mean, storyline, like I said, I've really liked the story so far. The flashbacks, I mean, I kind of, I, I, I think I, I, I want to think that I know where the story is going, but it could throw me for a curve later on down the road. Um, but where I'm at in the story so far is he's basically gotten to the point where he's, you know, we've, we've talked to this O'Brien guy and it turns out that at the very least his wife made it further than he thought. And it could be that she's still alive and, and who knows? So that, that part of the story has been very interesting to me because it, it, it suddenly takes this guy who's just very pissed off and, you know, he's just surviving to help his friends survive is really what it comes down to but then when he finds out that there might be this sliver of hope that you know the woman he loved is still around potentially it changes his persona and now he has something to live for and something to fight for and so from a storytelling perspective and a narrative perspective i really enjoyed the way they've done this story so far um the skill tree is pretty similar to most other types of survival games where it's like, oh, do you want to be stronger? Do you want to shoot better? Or do you want to have, you know, more survivability? I've, I've pretty much, I think the first six points I got, I put them all into the survival tree because I wanted to be able to um, have some more utility to my character. And then I started going into the ranged. Um, I don't do that much melee unless I absolutely have to. I really do like to be sneaky and use my crossbow for the most part 
um, and sneak around and do backstabs and stuff. So um, I've gotten to the second tier of weapons now. Um, and because I'm kind of playing this like a completionist level, like I said, I'm about 30 hours in. And I, I don't know how far into the game I am, but like most of the quest lines, I'm, I'm hitting like 25 to 30 percent. So I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm fairly deep into the game at this point. I don't know if I'm halfway yet. Um, I don't know what all those percentages mean because there's so many quest lines. Some of them are further along than others, so I really it's hard for me to gauge where I'm at in the storyline so far. But I can't really – there's not really a lot that I don't like about this game so far. Um, I don't understand people who say – like I've read a lot of reviews because of the press the last few days – or the last few days before I played this game, and I saw a lot of people commenting that, oh, the game takes forever for the story to get good. And it's like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Like, I've been having a blast since the game, like, since the very first, like, I log into the game and five hours later, I'm like, oh, crap, I need to actually turn the PlayStation off and and go get work done. Um, and then I got my work done and came back and played another five-hour session. Like, it's been so good for me anyway that I've been playing a lot more than I normally play um, and just really sinking my teeth into this game and the storyline. So I'm not sure where those comments are coming from where people are saying that the story sucks until you're like further on and they're like, oh, you have to do so much of this, you know, BS grinding to get to the good stuff. I honestly don't know what those people are saying. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't agree. I'm having a lot of fun with this game. So for me, if I had to give this game a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, I, man, I'd give this a 10, honestly. Uh, and I haven't finished it yet, so it, I, you know that might not be an objective um, review because I haven't actually finished the game. But I haven't seen anything in this game so far that I don't like. Like, it's just... I actually like this way more than I liked Last of Us 1 and 2, which those were great games, but they were never like, like I said, the story was always just too dark for me and just kind of depressing. And this game doesn't quite feel the same way. Plus, I just visually, it's very stunning. I love the motorcycle. I like the combat. I love the horde mechanics. Um, I like the, the way that weather impacts things. Um, there's a lot to like here. Um, I don't really have, like I said, the couple complaints that I have aren't enough, you know, for me to drop the score down. You know, it's like you can not do the repetitive stuff if you want to. You know, that's one of those things for me. I'll just not do all those uh, additional camps. So that's why I said, for me, I'm giving this game, I mean, I feel like it's a 10 out of 10. You know, worst case scenario, like a 9 out of 10. But like, for me solid game i'm giving two thumbs up i really like it uh let me know what you guys think in the comments below because i know the, there's a lot of people out there who like this game there's other people who are like oh you know takes too long to get there um and then of course i've seen the creative director make some some comments which i totally understand where he's coming from in terms of you know wanting to make a sequel and sony not wanting to spend the money on making a sequel because of how long it took to get off the ground and the fact that it didn't do the sales that they necessarily wanted but yet it still seems to have gotten really good reviews and sold from what i understand it sold more copies than all of the other games that that studio has ever built combined um and again i'm loving everything i've seen so far so maybe the pc port that just came out will help um rejuvenate interest in this and maybe we will see a sequel um, spin out and become a reality but in the meantime i'm loving it hope you guys like it as well don't forget to let me know in the comments below and of course don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon follow along if you want more of these types of videos i just started doing review videos about a month ago people seem to enjoy what i have to say about games so Thanks so much for that. All of the people who are new here, uh, thank you so much for the follows. Check out all the links below if you want to follow along at Twitter, join our Discord, etc., etc., etc. There's also a Patreon where you can help out and support what I'm doing here on this channel. And check out all the other things that I do here on YouTube as well. And until the next game that I review, stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun. See you, everybody. Bye.